Uh, now, let's go to London to chat to Brendan O'Neill. Great to chat to you as always. Chief Political Writer at Spike. You must subscribe to Spike Online. Great reading every week there or every day. Um, Brendan, we've great to see you. Uh, we've had uh, you've, you've got a great book out, which is all about October seven. So I just quickly want to ask you before we get on to the fact that the premiers here have all snubbed our monarch. Um, what about what do you make about this news overnight that the Malaysian premier and uh, whatever his name is has um, basically come out and condemned the killing of Yahya Sinwar? the leader of Hamas. What did you make of that? So basically, the Prime Minister of Malaysia is supporting Hamas, in effect. What do you make of it? I mean, it's shocking, but not surprising. And you know what? He's not the only one. In London, we've seen people basically crying in the streets today because Simwa was killed. And online, we're seeing leftists saying, you know, he was a great man and he, he's, he fought to the bitter end, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. All this praise for a guy who was essentially a fascist. He was a modern day Nazi who was driven by a violent hatred for Jews and who organized the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. You know, in my view, if anyone deserved to die in this 21st century, it was him. His death is a cause of celebration. I think it is good for Israelis and it is good for Palestinians who will have the boot of Hamas's tyranny slightly lifted off their neck. So I think anyone who's mourning his death is that's a red flag. That's the red mm. flag to end red flags. And that's Anwar Ibrahim, of course, the prime minister there of Malaysia. Rita. Uh, well, yeah, moving on to uh, the US, uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on uh, that race and what it means, not just for America, but the West in general and this uh, philosophy we're seeing from the Democrats uh, under Biden, arguably under Obama as well, and certainly would be followed under a Harris administration if she were to win. Uh, if Kamala Harris wins, we are doomed. <laughs> America yeah. is doomed and the world is doomed. I don't think the world can survive four years of President Harris. I just don't think we'll make it through. You know, <laughs> she is disastrous. Mm. She is, uh, you know, people talk about Biden being on another planet. At least he has the excuse of being old and infirm. What's her excuse? You know, <laughs> apart from the fact that she seems to drink a lot. But, you know, she, <laughs> she often... She often doesn't make sense. She mm. rambles. She, it's incoherent. We don't quite know what she believes. We we don't. She's incapable of explaining to us what her policies would mm. be. I think it would be a disaster if she gets into the White House. And you know the thing that everyone said about Trump when he ran for the second time. Everyone said if he gets in a second time, the world will go to rack and ruin. In fact, the world went to rack and ruin under Biden. It was under the Democrats that war has exploded in Europe, in the Middle East. You know, under Trump, things were relatively settled. So under the Democrats, the world has gone in a bad direction. And I think it will get worse if Kamala Harris gets in. James. Well, Brendan, I mean, you said for a moment ago that um, that you didn't really know, nobody really knew what Kamala Harris uh, was on about and what her policies are. But I would put to you that on three key issues, uh, immigration and the regularization of illegals to create a new class of voter, um, on free speech, which she's already said uh, she wants limits on, and on the Supreme Court, which is the big check on congressional executive power, she would change all of those things. So, I don't know, Brendan, I mean, what do you think about that? Because I feel like there's a real concrete program that's out there staring us in the face if only we care to look at it. Yeah, when, when her policies do slip out, when they do kind of uh, leak through all the nonsense that she speaks, they are. it is terrifying, no question about that. She is awful on freedom of speech. She's not listening to the American people on the issue of immigration, on the issue of the border and, and people's desire for better control of the border. She's not listening to people on that. And also her identity politics is incredibly worrying. I can't believe that the other day, she said that there is Russian interference in this election, that old chestnut, and that hmm. it's being targeted at black men. You know, here's, here's a woman who claims to speak on behalf of ethnic minorities, essentially saying that black men are being brainwashed by Russians. 
you know, mm. call me old fashioned, but that sounds a tad racist, if you ask me. So that identity politics as well, that very divisive pork barrel politics in a modern form, that is also a destructive policy of hers, which I think will make America more divided. So what we do know of her policy is terrible. What we don't know is scary, because who knows what she'd do if she got into power. Now, Brendan, I want to play you a bit of uh, Sky News Britain. Uh, not often we play them, but uh, here you go. They're, they were equally appalled as people here are about the fact that all our premiers from all our states refused to meet, come along and meet the king and queen. Here you go. Have a listen. There's a reception in Canberra for the king and none of the political leaders of the eight states and territories here are attending. Their no show has been dubbed a royal snub. I love the royal family. It's a personal thing. Um, my grandma loved it, so yeah, it's awesome. I think it's just outdated. I think it's a, a very classist and imperialist system. I think it's fantastic. I'm glad that they are part of us. We're part of them. It is stable. I like that stability. So, Brendan, the Poms have always been fascinated by how down under we treat the king and queen. How's it been received in Britain? <sighs> People here are pretty shocked that all six premiers are not bothering to show up for this event in Canberra. It is not going down very well over here. And, you know, even I, I'm a Republican. I am not a fan of the monarchy. I was a fan of Queen Elizabeth II. I thought she was a great person, not so much of, of Charles. Um, but I do think that if you are a premier in a country in which Charles is the head of state, you should make an effort to go and attend this event. That is just good manners. You know, even I wouldn't snub the king if I'd been invited to meet him. And I'm a Republican through and through. So I do think it comes off very badly for these premiers that they are not bothering to do something that I think most Aussies, even some Republican Aussies, think is a good thing for them to have done. It, it really makes Australia look bad, I think.